Stories and Documentary Network. Welcome, history enthusiasts. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey through the rich tapestry of Thai history, tracing the evolution of this vibrant Southeast Asian nation from the glory days of Ayutthaya to the modern era. Our narrative unfolds through the rise and fall of powerful kingdoms, cultural transformations, and the strategic maneuvers of visionary leaders. Join us as we explore the captivating story of Thailand, a land where tradition and progress intersect in a captivating dance. Our narrative begins with Sukhothai, a brief period of independence, followed by the flourishing reign of Ayutthaya. Situated along the Chao Freya River basin, Ayutthaya's dominance for over 400 years shaped the destiny of the Thai people. From the adoption of Hindu concepts to the expansion of territory, Ayutthaya's story is one of power, influence, and cultural assimilation. The script unfolds further with the Siamese conquest of Angkor, the complexities of Ayutthaya's political structure, and the thriving international trade that transformed the city into a cosmopolitan hub. European interactions, diplomatic exchanges, and the eventual closing of doors to the West set the stage for the kingdom's later challenges. As we delve into the 17th century, we witness the primary threat to Ayutthaya's sovereignty emerging not from Europe but from Burmese kingdoms. The sacking of Ayutthaya in 1767 marks a pivotal moment, leading to the rise of Taksin and the establishment of a new capital, Thonburi. Taksin's triumphs and subsequent mental instability paved the way for the founding of the enduring Chakri dynasty. Transitioning into the 19th century, we explore the relocation of the capital to Bangkok under the first Rama, the persistent Burmese threat, and the flourishing Chinese influence in Siam. The script unfolds further with Western pressures, the reign of the fourth Rama, and the transformative period under the fifth Rama, who faced Western encroachment while implementing crucial reforms. The narrative peaks with the remarkable reign of Chulalongkorn, whose progressive policies and reforms left an indelible mark on Thai history. As we conclude, we witness the emergence of modern Thailand, shaped by the visionary leadership of Chulalongkorn and his successors. Join us as we unravel the complexities, triumphs, and challenges that have defined Thailand's historical landscape. Subscribe, like, and stay tuned for a captivating exploration of From Ayutthaya to Modern Thailand, a historical journey. As the Thai people migrated into mainland Southeast Asia, they encountered populations speaking Mon Khmer languages, particularly the Mon, who had long inhabited the region. Indian traders had introduced Hindu and Buddhist beliefs to some of these groups, including the Mon in present-day Myanmar, during the early centuries of the first millennium common era. The Mon were the first people in mainland Southeast Asia to adopt Buddhism. Between the 6th and 9th centuries, the Mon established small Buddhist kingdoms known as Devaravadi, covering present-day southern Myanmar and central Thailand. From central Thailand, extending from Nakhon Patham and Lop Buri, they expanded their influence eastward across the Korat Plateau, northward to Chiang Mai, and northeastward into what is now Laos. The Devaravadi period is notable for its Buddhist sculptures and votive images made of terracotta or stucco. In their southward movement, the Thai people also encountered the Khmer of Cambodia. From the 9th to the 13th century, Khmer rulers expanded their empire from Angkor, reaching its zenith under the 7th Jayawarman, encompassing approximately half of modern Thailand. While the Mon kingdoms were predominantly Buddhist, Khmer civilization, epitomized by the Angkor temple complex, was heavily influenced by Hindu ideas and practices. The Thai borrowed various elements of Indianized culture from the Khmer, including royal ceremonies, court customs, and the Indian epic Ramayana, which left a lasting impact on literature and classical dance. Even in modern Thai culture, traces of the Indianized culture of Angkor remain evident. By the early 13th century, the Thai people exerted pressure on both the Mon and Khmer empires. They settled across the Chao Freya Basin, establishing a Thai ruler as far south as Nakhon Si Tamarat on the Malay Peninsula. Through Nakhon Si Tamarat, a new form of Buddhism, Theravada, entered mainland Southeast Asia from Sri Lanka. Monks carrying Theravada Buddhism spread not only to areas under Mon or Khmer rule but also to emerging Thai principalities. 
Sukhothai and Lan Na, Lana, the first major Thai kingdoms in Thai history, embraced Theravada Buddhism, marking a significant cultural and religious shift in the region. The Kingdom of Sukhothai, located in the Upper Chao Freya Basin, emerged in the mid-13th century when a local Thai ruler led a rebellion against Khmer rule in an outpost of the Khmer Empire. Initially a small local power under its first two rulers, Sukhothai experienced significant expansion under its third ruler, Ramkumhang. He extended Sukhothai's influence southward to Nakhon Si Tamarat, westward into present-day Myanmar, and northeastward to Luang Prabang in modern Laos. Many of these territories joined Sukhothai as vassal or tributary states through kinship ties or personal loyalty, forming a loose confederation. Ramkumhang is celebrated not only for territorial expansion but also for an extraordinary stone inscription, considered the earliest example of writing in any Thai language. Dated 1292 and using Khmer script adapted to Thai speech sounds and tones, the inscription depicts Sukhothai as a prosperous kingdom engaged in trade, benevolently governed by a paternal monarch. The inscription highlights modest taxation, equal treatment of all subjects, including non-Thai, and the provision of justice for all. The Sukhothai period, spanning from the mid-13th to the mid-15th century, is renowned for its sculpture and pottery. Elegant bronze Buddha sculptures, especially those portraying him in a walking position, characterize this era. The Celadon ware produced in Sukhothai and nearby Sawankalok gained popularity and was exported throughout Southeast Asia. During this period, Sukhothai was not the only Thai state in Southeast Asia, in northern Thailand, around the mid-13th century, Thai ruler Mangrai conquered the ancient Mon kingdom of Haripunjaya and established a new capital at Chiang Mai. Under Mangrai and his successors, Lan Na, with Chiang Mai as its capital, became a powerful center for spreading Theravada Buddhism to Thai peoples in present-day northeastern Myanmar, southern China, and northern Laos. Under Tilakaracha, Lan Na gained renown for Buddhist scholarship and literature. However, Lan Na faced conquest by the Burmese during the 16th century, becoming part of the Burman Empire until the late 18th century. While Sukhothai enjoyed independence for a relatively brief 200 years, its successor, Ayutthaya, situated in the fertile rice plains along the Chao Freya River Basin, approximately 55 miles north of modern-day Bangkok, thrived for over 400 years. Throughout the Ayutthayan era, the Thai people solidified their dominance, emerging as the predominant power in present-day central and north-central Thailand, as well as the southern peninsular region. Due to the widespread use of the name, Siam, by Ayutthaya's neighbors, the Thai people of Ayutthaya became commonly known as the Siamese. Originally a modest city kingdom on the northwestern fringes of the formidable Khmer Empire, Ayutthaya rapidly expanded its influence. Within a century, Thai kings successfully pushed back the Khmer, culminating in the sacking of their grand capital, Angkor, in 1431. Despite ongoing wars with neighboring powers, Ayutthaya continued to assert its dominance. In 1438, a significantly weakened Sukhothai was integrated as a province of Ayutthaya. Meanwhile, Lan Na remained free from Ayutthayan control but eventually fell under Burman influence. The Siamese conquest of Angkor brought numerous Khmer captives to Ayutthaya, including former officials and craftsmen from the Khmer royal court. From these captives, Ayutthaya's rulers adopted many Hindu ideas and practices, mirroring those of the Khmer. This included the concept of the ruler as a god-king, Devaraja, endowing the king with the power to determine the fate of all his subjects. Only members of the royal family were permitted to gaze upon the king's face, and addressing him required a special language reserved exclusively for royalty. Those communicating with the king referred to themselves as the dust beneath your majesty's feet. The authority of the ruler in Ayutthaya was not only bolstered by symbolic and ideological concepts derived from Khmer Hindu beliefs regarding the god king but also through the consolidation of political power. During the reign of Trelok, a state was established where the ruler occupied the central position within a system of concentric circles. Similar to the Muang system, the outer circles were governed by hereditary lords, or Chao, while the inner circles were administered by individuals appointed by the king. To some extent, 
these appointments operated on bureaucratic rather than hereditary principles. Ayutthayan kings also promulgated formal codes of civil law, rooted in the ancient Indian legal tradition known as the Dharma Shastra. Simultaneously, a complex hierarchical system assigned a specified number of units, called Sakti Na, to each social status, determining an individual's rank within society. At the lowest rung, a slave was valued at five units, while freemen were ranked at twenty-five and above. The heir apparent to the throne was assigned no fewer than 100,000 units. In the Ayutthayan era, whether freemen or slaves, the majority of the population toiled in the fields. Slaves included war captives and individuals held in bondage to settle debts. Freemen were obligated to work for six months each year for the local representatives of the king, pay taxes, and provide military service as needed. A complex patronage system permeated society, with clients offering services to patrons in exchange for protection. Ayutthaya faced a shortage of manpower, and this scarcity helped shield clients from excessive demands by patrons. As a last resort, a freeman could relocate and cultivate new land if the demands became overly burdensome. Theravada Buddhism took firm root in Siam during the Ayutthayan period, coexisting with Brahmanism that characterized court rituals and earlier religious practices prevalent across society. The Buddhist monastic establishment, Sangha, played a significant role, serving as a focal point for village life, providing education to young males, and offering a path for upward social mobility for those who chose to remain in the Sangha. In the 17th century, Ayutthaya, according to European visitors, stood out as one of the wealthiest and most cosmopolitan cities globally. Despite being inland, it was easily accessible to ocean-going vessels traveling up the Chao Freya River, transforming it into a flourishing international trade hub. This period saw the arrival of European traders and travelers, starting with the Portuguese in 1511 and followed by the Dutch, English, Spanish, and French in the 17th century. Ayutthayan kings allowed Chinese, Indian, Persian, and European traders to establish settlements, employed Japanese warriors, and permitted Western missionaries to preach within Ayutthayan territories. In addition to extensive trade with China, Southeast Asia, and India, Ayutthaya sent tribute missions to the Chinese imperial court, established Buddhist missions in Sri Lanka, and dispatched emissaries as far as Europe. King Narai initiated diplomatic exchanges with the French court at Versailles and appointed a Greek adventurer, Constantine Falcon, as his chief minister. However, tensions arose when Europeans became overly zealous in attempting to convert Buddhist Siamese to Christianity. In 1688, the Siamese expelled the French from Ayutthaya and largely closed their doors to the West for the next 150 years. The primary threat to Ayutthayan sovereignty, however, emerged not from Europe but from Burmese kingdoms. In 1569, forces from the Burman state of Tungu overran Ayutthaya and laid waste to the surrounding countryside. Under Narisuan, Ayutthaya regained its independence. Conflict with the Burmese persisted, and in the mid-18th century, Burman armies once again captured Ayutthaya. This time, the city did not recover. Following the sacking of the city in 1767, the king, members of the royal family, and thousands of captives were deported to the Burmese kingdom. All Ayutthayan records were burned, and its works of art were destroyed. A new chapter in Thai history unfolded with the ascent of Taksin a military commander renowned for his skill and charismatic personality. In a remarkable feat, he expelled the Burmese and, within a decade after the fall of Ayutthaya, declared himself King of Siam. In 1767, Taksin established his capital at Thon Buri, situated on the opposite bank of the Chao Freya River from present-day Bangkok. This strategic relocation, less vulnerable to Myanmar's armies than Ayutthaya, proved ideal for maritime trade and commerce. Leveraging Siam's existing trade ties with China, Taksin actively encouraged Chinese merchants and craftsmen to seize the economic opportunities afforded by his new capital. A substantial influx of Chinese immigrants permanently settled in Siam, contributing significantly to business, trade, and tax revenues that played a pivotal role in rebuilding the kingdom's devastated economy. Taksin not only reclaimed territories that were once part of the Ayutthayan Empire but also sought to expand Siamese influence into new regions. 
His armies annexed northeastern Cambodia, extended control up the Mekong River to present De Vientiane in Laos, subdued the northern portion of the Malay Peninsula to the south, and drove the Burmese out of the old northern Thai kingdom of Lan Na to the north. Despite these early successes, signs of serious mental instability began to emerge in Taksin within a few years of his rise to power. In 1782, he was overthrown and subsequently put to death. His successor was his former military commander, officially known as Chao Freya, Great Lord, Chakri. This marked the founding of the Chakri, or Chakri, dynasty, which has endured to the present day. With the ascension of the new king, later known as the first Rama, one of his initial actions was to relocate the capital across the Chao Freya River to the then small village of Bangkok. By the mid-19th century, Bangkok had evolved into a bustling city, boasting a population of around 400,000, largely due to the substantial influx of Chinese immigrants into Siam. Beyond settling in Bangkok, the Chinese established trading settlements inland, some of which developed into small towns. Over time, the Chinese community gained increased influence over both domestic and foreign trade in the country. Throughout the early Chakri reigns, the Burmese kingdom posed a persistent threat to Siam. In 1785, a massive Burmese invasion challenged Siam, requiring considerable effort to repel. Subsequent minor attacks followed, persisting until the 1820s, when British actions in Burmese territory diverted Burman attention inward allowing Siam to ease its vigilance along its western borders. To the east, Rama I and later the Third Rama brought Khmer territories under vassal status, while in the south, Rama III reinforced Siamese control over tributary states in the Malay Peninsula. Rama III also quelled a significant uprising in the north led by Chao Anu, the young Lao ruler of Vien Chan, Vien Tian. In 1827, Siamese armies raised and plundered Vien Tian, deporting thousands of Lao to central Siam. The early Chakri kings were dedicated to revitalizing the cultural legacy of Ayutthaya. They constructed new temples and palaces in Bangkok, replicating the styles and even using some of the same bricks that adorned Ayutthaya. Rama I reinstated court rituals, issued comprehensive law codes and authoritative Buddhist texts, and played a pivotal role in reviving the Sangha by appointing learned and devout monks to prominent positions within the Buddhist hierarchy. The early Bangkok period witnessed a flourishing literary scene. Rama I set the Thai version of the Indian epic Ramayana, known as the Ramakian, to verse. The second Rama, an accomplished poet, became an arts patron, and Sun Thon Phu, Thailand's eminent poet, crafted some of his most renowned works during the second Rama reign. Western influence grew in mainland Southeast Asia in the early 19th century, accompanied by mounting Western pressures on Siam. Fearing potential British attacks after Britain declared war on the Burmese kingdom in 1824, the Third Rama agreed to the Burney Treaty, establishing conditions for trade between the two countries. Mongkut's reign was succeeded by his 15-year-old son Chulalongkorn known as the Fifth Rama. Due to Chulalongkorn's youth, a regent governed the country until he reached maturity in 1873. Chulalongkorn faced ongoing Western pressure and continued his father's policy of making territorial concessions to the West, aiming to preserve Siam's overall independence. In 1893, French gunboats compelled their way up the Chao Freya River to Bangkok, leading to the cession of all Lao territories east of the Mekong River to France. In 1907, the French assumed control over three territories in northwestern Cambodia and Lao territory west of the Mekong, which had been under Siamese suzerainty. Two years later, the Siamese government forfeited rights over four Malay states to the British. The establishment of a modern military was a direct response to the looming threat of domination that Siam faced, particularly from France, in the late 19th century. Simultaneously, Chulalongkorn embarked on extensive reforms within the country. Despite facing resistance from influential figures at court, the young king, assisted by several brothers and half-brothers, especially the brilliant and energetic prince Damrong Rajanubhab, implemented significant changes. Internal reforms during Chulalongkorn's reign included the reorganization of the government into ministries with specific responsibilities and the creation of a centralized bureaucracy. He instituted a uniform and centralized system of administration for outlying provinces, 
systematize government revenue collection, abolish slavery and labor service requirements, established law courts, reformed the judiciary, introduced a modern school system, and developed railways and telegraph systems. Additionally, he supported a major reorganization of the Buddhist monkhood, unifying all monks throughout the country into the Sangha, forming a nationwide religious hierarchy linked at its apex to the king. Shulalongkorn's reforms, by any standard, were remarkable in scale, and his reign is widely regarded as one of the greatest in Thai history. The modern state of Thailand stands as his enduring legacy. Shulalongkorn's progressive policies continued under his sons Vajiravud as known the sixth Rama and Prajadipok as known the seventh Rama. In 1917, Vajiravud, the first Thai monarch educated abroad, established Thailand's inaugural university, named in honor of his father. Taking a step further, in 1921, he mandated universal primary education across the nation. In response to the increasing Chinese population, he enacted a law requiring all students to be proficient in standard Thai, Siamese, and instructed in their responsibilities as good Siamese citizens. Vajiravud, however, is chiefly remembered for fostering Thai nationalism. His extensive writings emphasized the importance of loyalty to nation, religion, and king. In addition to fortifying the military and navy, he created the Wild Tiger Corps, a paramilitary organization independent of the regular army. In 1917, he aligned Siam with the Allies in World War I and successfully persuaded Western powers to relinquish their extraterritorial rights in the country. In 1913, Vajiravud passed a law mandating all Siamese adopt surnames, and he encouraged people to adopt European-inspired clothing styles for a more modern look, urging the abandonment of habits such as beetle-chewing. Vajiravud's penchant for extravagance became notorious, and Prajadipok, his successor, inherited serious fiscal challenges. The new king initiated layoffs in various government departments at the beginning of his reign and again during the Great Depression of the 1930s. These cuts inflicted considerable economic hardship on numerous government officials and their families, contributing to widespread discontent with the monarchy during Prajadipok's reign. Simultaneously, a burgeoning middle class grew increasingly unhappy with the dominance of the government by members of the royal family and the lack of broader participation in political decision-making. An emerging popular press provided a platform for voicing these grievances, marking a pivotal period of change and dissent in Thai history. In December 1938, Phibun Sankram assumed power as a military dictator, and the following year, he changed the name of the country from Siam to Thailand. His administration pursued a strongly nationalistic policy characterized by chauvinism and anti-Chinese sentiments domestically, and an irredentist and pro-Japanese stance internationally. Phibun Sankram aimed to enhance the military's position, especially the army, in which he held the rank of field marshal portraying it as the defender of the nation. Luang Wichit Watakin, Phibun Songkram's influential ideologist, drew inspiration from a Japanese prototype for his concept of Waratham, the Code of the Warrior, as the foundation for Thai nationalism. In November 1940, seizing the opportunity presented by the defeat of France by Germany in June of the same year, Phibun Songkram ordered the invasion of French territories in western Laos and northwestern Cambodia, which had previously been under Thai control. Japan supported Thailand's claims to the disputed lands. Despite their alignment with Japan, Thailand's leaders sought assistance from Britain and France against an increasingly aggressive Japan. However, the British were preoccupied with European affairs and unable to provide meaningful support. On December 8, 1941, following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Japanese troops entered Thailand and requested passage through the country to facilitate their planned surprise rear attack on British-held Singapore. After a brief fight against the advancing Japanese, all Thai troops were ordered by Phibun Songkram to lay down their arms. Subsequently, Thailand signed a full treaty of alliance with Japan, and in January 1942, the Thai government declared war on Britain and the United States. While Thailand gained minor territorial concessions in Burma, Myanmar, Malaya, Laos, and Cambodia from its wartime alliance with Japan, the Thai economy suffered significantly, eroding public confidence in Phibun Songkram. From 1942 onward, overseas resistance groups based in the United States and Britain made contact with similar groups within Thailand led by Preeti Phanamyong, 
then serving as regent in the absence of the young king Ananda. The Free Thai, as these groups were collectively known, conducted raids against the Japanese and successfully infiltrated the government. In July 1944, Fibun Sankram was forced to resign, and in August 1945, Japan surrendered. Ayutthaya, the former capital of the Kingdom of Siam, stands as a testament to the rich legacy and cultural heritage of Thailand. Nestled along the Chao Phraya River, this once flourishing city was a political, economic, and cultural powerhouse for over four centuries. The legacy of Ayutthaya is etched in the remnants of its temples and ruins, each telling a compelling story of a bygone era. The city was a thriving hub of trade and diplomacy, attracting merchants and emissaries from across the globe. Its prosperity is vividly reflected in the architectural marvels that have withstood the test of time. The temples of Ayutthaya, adorned with intricate carvings and towering spires, offer a glimpse into the spiritual and artistic heights achieved during the city's zenith. Wat Phra Si Sanpet, with its distinctive chetis, was the spiritual heart of Ayutthaya. The Wat Mahathat, famous for the iconic Buddha head entwined in the roots of a banyan tree, captures the enigmatic aura of the ancient capital. However, Ayutthaya's legacy is not merely confined to its grand temples. It resonates through the sprawling ruins that dot the landscape. The city fell victim to Burmese invasions in the 18th century, leading to its eventual decline. The dilapidated structures, like silent witnesses, bear scars of war and the passage of time. Exploring the temples and ruins is a journey through history, where one can feel the echoes of Ayutthaya's glorious past. The UNESCO World Heritage Site status bestowed upon the historic city of Ayutthaya underscores its global significance and the commitment to preserving its cultural wealth. As the sun sets over the Chao Freya, casting a warm glow on the weathered stones, visitors are transported to an age when Ayutthaya stood as a shining jewel in Southeast Asia. The legacy of this ancient kingdom lives on, inviting travelers and historians alike to unravel the mysteries of its temples and ruins, preserving the spirit of Ayutthaya for generations to come. In conclusion, the historical journey from the ancient city of Sukhothai through the flourishing Ayutthaya period to the transformative reigns of Taksin, the first Rama, Chulalongkorn, and beyond, unveils the rich tapestry of Thailand's past. The Siamese civilization, deeply rooted in Khmer Hindu traditions, evolved into a cosmopolitan hub during the Ayutthaya era, embracing trade and cultural exchange with the world. Challenges, both internal and external, tested the resilience of successive Thai leaders. The fall of Ayutthaya marked a turning point, leading to Taksin's rise and the founding of the Chakri dynasty. The first Rama decision to move the capital to Bangkok laid the foundation for the modern Thai state. Subsequent monarchs, notably Chu Lalongkorn, implemented sweeping reforms that modernized the country and preserved its independence in the face of Western pressures. As Thailand embraced the 20th century, monarchs like Vajiravud and Prajadipok navigated the challenges of modernization and nationalism. The latter faced economic hardships and growing discontent, setting the stage for a period of significant change. This historical journey serves as a testament to Thailand's ability to adapt, transform, and assert its identity in the face of internal and external challenges. The legacy of visionary leaders, cultural resilience, and a dynamic society shapes the Thailand we know today. Join us in exploring the fascinating chapters of Thai history by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel for more enriching content. Thank you for being part of this historical exploration and don't forget to stay connected for future insights.